Antarctic Snow Cruiser, the failed vehicle developed under the personal direction of the super awesome Admiral Richard Byrd to explore Antarctica and go beyond the ice on this level Earth, called FLAT and misunderstood because the big majority of the human population lives on a spinning ball with curved water spinning in space. This was in 1939-1941 Antarctic expedition just slightly before the Second World War started the latest reset. Um, Admiral Byrd then had a second in command Dr. Thomas Poulter and they went to Washington DC and they said we want a vehicle that allows us to go beyond and to explore everything in Antarctica. Antarctica. So they got $150,000 in 1939 to build this and operations started in uh, August 8th. So the construction of the vehicle lasted for 11 weeks and it was designed for traversing the uh, Antarctic ice and snow. Uh, the vehicle, I'm just going to tell you a bit of a description. It's actually amazing, right? But then the vehicle was a failure, according to them. Uh, the snow cruiser was 17 meters long, that's 55 feet, and 4.6 meters wide, that's 15 feet. Uh, it weighed 20 tons, which is 20,000 kilograms, um, 45,000 pounds. And a maximum five people could be inside the vehicle a full year, so 365 days, with all the food, fuel, and equipment. So it was not just a vehicle for transportation, it was like a solid base of operations. Um, and they, besides that, you know, the wheels were super amazing, awesome, because each wheel had its own engine. It had like, also it had a science lab, a photo room, an engine room, and a small machine shop. Each wheel was three meters in diameter, that's 10 feet, and each wheel was 700 pounds, that's over 300 kilograms. And um, they had this special type of rubber material for specifically made for the extreme cold in Antarctica. Each wheel was independently steered by its own motor. And there were electric motors and also uh, normal fuel motors. And the uh, maximum speed of the vehicle was 48 kilometers per hour. That's 30 miles. Although usually it would go at 13 miles, which is like 20 kilometers. But the maximum speed was 48 kilometers, 30 miles. So you, know, you, can, tra you can cross a lot. Uh, of Antarctica. 300 horsepower. Uh, they did testing in the States, in the Midwest, with the dunes of sand and on the beaches and stuff before actually um, embarking on North Star ship in November 1939 and arriving in Antarctica. Once they arrived in Antarctica, the problems, according to them, according to what the crew said, the problem started. They could not uh, move the vehicle in ice and snow because the wheels, uh, even though it's interesting, right, because the wheels were perfectly fine in the dunes of sand in the states in the midwest and stuff and in the snow they said they had trouble to move it and that the vehicle would actually move better in reverse mode they did like uh, 150 kilometers so 90 miles in reverse mode rather than going forward and uh, the sinking the wheels were too uh, so the vehicle was too heavy for the snow and it would sink in the snow it would sink approximately one meter in the snow three feet and uh, they said no in the end the crew was using it as a station uh, just to be inside because it was warm and to do different type of survey and um, ex uh, explorations of the train without moving the vehicle so what happened is that according to what they said they wanted to get the vehicle back into the states for improvements but then washington dc said no we're not going to give you any more money because we are focusing on world war ii because you know uh that's when World War II started. So literally they abandoned the vehicle uh, at the Little America 3 base, which um, uh, that was in December 1940. And as you know, Little America bases were you know, based on icebergs which were moving and stuff. So in the end, uh, when Operation High Jump happened uh, in 1946, uh, six years later, you know, when the Americans fought against the Germans in, in Antarctica, uh, don't say that, you're not allowed. So um, um, they found, the expedition team found the vehicle abandoned, but nobody did anything to recover it. And then in 1958, also there was an expedition who uncovered the vehicle from a lot of snow, so it was still there. And then the US said that uh, somehow the Soviet Union during the Cold War, they took the vehicle away, even though others are saying that you know the vehicle is still out there in the middle of nowhere under the snow and that's it why would you abandon the vehicle in the first place i don't know uh maybe there was an interest for abandoning the vehicle maybe the vehicle actually worked and um uh, officially it had not to work because you know if it works then you can explore antarctica and go beyond um 
and then of course they have the Antarctic Treaty and all of a sudden it's forbidden to go with any vehicle because if you go you're, um, you're a threat to the, to the environment and to the nature of this spinning ball with curved water in space. Uh, so sad, you know, when you see this vehicle. I mean, I'm not saying that it, uh, it probably didn't work, you know, because it's super heavy and those rubber wheels, they're not really that, um, they don't seem to be adapted to working in harsh cold con environment conditions in, uh, in Antarctica. But, do you know, like, what if actually it worked and you know Antarctica when you go because you know all the maps we have are fake so after you go a certain length of miles and kilometers you get to dry land land with like 25 centigrade degree centigrade and like good weather and stuff so then you have like just land with like water and uh, and soil uh, earth so but that's obviously something that it's not allowed. It also could carry an airplane as well. So imagine the amount of things that, you know, if we just like uh, allow it to be improved and then just allow it to explore the continent and then maybe, you know, as you get to the different humanity, a different human species, a different land, uh, a different continent, uh, the stuff that you and I are not allowed to know because uh, that's the order given. So what can you do besides just imagining how it would have been you know if you all would be allowed to just go to antarctica and explore and all of a sudden you reach a nice warm area and then you say hello to your fellow human beings species from the other continent but that's something that uh, you know it's too much for the big majority of our human people of our human species of our fellow humans who just prefer to uh, pay their bank debts living on a spinning ball with curved water and spinning in space i'll see you guys in the next video take care